The first video on my channel to ever break 1,000 views was a video on if temperature could be negative. Amid the excitement, a viewer on Reddit pointed out that this is actually an open question and that there is an active discussion on whether uh, the treatment I used in the video was the correct one. So this definitely surprised me. My day-to-day -day research uh, is focused on the foundations of quantum statistical mechanics. So perhaps I was missing a huge picture uh, in the literature. So naturally I was very curious. You can, for example, see this controversy on Wikipedia uh, by looking at the page for negative temperature, where it states some theorists have proposed using an alternative definition of entropy as a way to resolve perceived inconsistencies. So in this video, let's unpack this, explain what both sides are claiming, and at the end, I will connect this to our usual discussion on the channel. For starters, we will isolate our discussion uh, to closed, isolated systems with finite volume, and we will describe our system with some Hamiltonian H, such that the energy eigenstates and energy eigenvalues are given by the following expression. We will assume our spectrum is discrete, but potentially has an infinite number of accessible energies. For the remainder of the video, to keep things simple, when we say microstates, we are referring to these energy eigenstates. The reason we isolate ourselves uh, to these conditions is for one, it's easy to resolve the controversy, uh, and two, we can supplement our discussion uh, with other resources on this channel. At its heart, the disagreement stems from the definition of entropy and how it connects to the microstates of a given model. As a side statement, there has been a fair amount of back and forth in the literature. We won't cover that here. We won't go into that much depth. We will instead present both definitions of entropy, talk about their consequences pertaining to temperature, and then unpack issues and compatibility with modern concepts in statistical mechanics. Both sides define temperature in the usual thermodynamic way. Without referencing what we mean by S yet, the entropy, we see that the temperature will always be positive if by increasing the energy of our system, we also increase the entropy. Contrary to this, if the entropy can decrease with respect to increasing energy, temperature will be negative. So let's quickly review our two competing definitions of entropy. Let's start with the usual one, the one you were taught in school and the one we use on this channel, the Boltzmann entropy. Omega here is the number of energetically accessible microstates. Usually we take all energy values in some microcanonical window. So for example, we add one to omega for every energy eigenvalue that exists within some small energy window or something along these lines. This entropy definition is the one usually taught in textbooks. And in it, we are actually allowing for negative temperatures. As in my negative temperature video, if our space of possible states is finite or our energy is bounded above, it, it is the case that we will end up with an omega that decreases eventually with respect to energy. Spin systems usually have this property. On the contrary, if our Hamiltonian includes the usual kinetic term, say by considering non-interacting particles in a box, the energy is unbounded, and in general, we wouldn't get a negative temperature. That is, omega, and therefore the Boltzmann entropy, would always grow with energy. So a quick way to summarize how we do our counting is that we only count states that are on an energy surface or a small energy window. Next, let's look at the competing idea. The authors refer to this entropy as the Gibbs entropy, which is a little bit unfortunate. We will instead refer to it as the Hertz entropy, as the Gibbs entropy definition might be better served as referring to the version of the Shannon entropy that appears in the Gibbs maximal entropy algorithm. The Hertz entropy put forward as an alternative is given by the following equation, where phi now is the volume. Instead of counting all of the energies in an energy window um, in the neighborhood around some fixed energy E, we instead count all energies from the smallest energy up to our energy E. So our condition to count microstates is that if an energy is less than E, we add one to phi. 
So we can see this as instead of a surface area calculation, we can see it as a volume calculation. The important consequence of taking this definition is that temperature now is always positive. Since we will always count all microstates with energy below our system's energy, increasing energy always increases entropy. So which entropy definition should we use? Well, unsurprisingly, the old definition of entropy wins out. The Hertz entropy has a number of problems that are too costly um, in exchange for only positive temperatures. Firstly, the Hertz entropy is unphysical. We can imagine our system is in some state rho which roughly sits at some fixed energy or has support on a small window of energy. The Hertz entropy cannot be computed by just the density matrix rho and needs extra input from non-energetically accessible microstates. So from this perspective, the Hertz entropy is unphysical. Secondly, the temperature defined by the Hertz entropy is inconsistent with the temperature defined for the canonical ensemble. To see this, consider a system with an incredibly large number of spins. We will define it so that a spin down gives zero energy and a spin up gives some small energy u which will be greater than zero. If we take our system to be defined in the microcanonical ensemble and we pick an energy for that system such that the energy is greater than the number of spins times our up energy divided by two, then we are in a regime where the Boltzmann entropy will give us a negative temperature and the Hertz entropy will give us a positive temperature. So let's briefly demonstrate that the canonical ensemble requires a negative temperature in this context. For the spin system, we have two possible states for each individual spin, either up or down. Since the system is non-interacting, we can complete this analysis by only considering one spin. The partition function for one spin is given by the following equation. Then the total energy for our one spin uh, is given by the next equation. Taking beta to zero is equivalent to taking temperature to infinity, as we expect the usual relation in statistical mechanics, as beta is inversely proportional to the thermodynamic temperature. This then gives us the total energy, as E is equal to U over two. So the positive temperature regime cannot describe the equilibrium that we set by describing our microcanonical ensemble. If this is an obvious, we assumed that the total energy was above the number of particles times u divided by two, uh, giving us an energy density or energy per spin that is greater than u over two. To describe the equilibrium, we need to introduce negative temperature here. This is an example of population inversion. So it's important to note that this example is a bit trivial and easy, but negative temperatures are required to explain much more complicated systems in equilibrium, like some experiments done on optical lattices. And it's also important to note that these are just two objections. In the description, I will link to a few more articles uh, with more objections to the Hertz entropy being used as the thermodynamic entropy. If you enjoyed the video, uh, consider joining my Discord channel, a community dedicated to chatting about many body physics and statistical mechanics. If you liked the video, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below.